He is an Emmy-winning actor, perhaps best known for his roles in Trainspotting, Moulin Rouge, and as Jedi, Obi-Wan Kenobi in the Star Wars prequels trilogy. He's joined today by his daughter Clara, who conceived, produced, and also co-stars in a new movie, and by the director, Emma Westenberg. The film is called You Sing Loud, I Sing Louder. It premiered last night to South by Southwest. A great audience that loved it. How y'all doing? Congrats. Give them a round of applause. It's daylight savings. We haven't slept, but damn it, we're here. <laughs> Who needs to sleep when you have a premiere of the movie? You all are still buzzing. How, how'd you all feel? First time in a, with the crowd. Oh, it was amazing. It was a whole different experience seeing it with it on that massive screen with a room full of people. And yeah, I don't know. I'm still buzzing. Buzzing. Yeah, in it all. How'd you feel? Yeah, it played very nicely. It's, it, it is. It, it is. The first time you see it with a big crowd like that, it's very telling. And the film just played really beautifully. Emma did such a brilliant Emma, job. Emma, just, it's just your first movie, no, yeah. no pressure. <laughs> and, and you're seeing it with the crowd. Uh, yeah, I like how you and say it just played very nicely. Mm -hmm. And you're seeing the audience really respond well to it. How'd you feel after so much effort and work to see the vision on a big screen with a living audience? Yeah, I was very relieved that people were <laughs> laughing and <laughs> yeah, responding, you know, it would be would have been quite terrible if it was like dead silent, but it was a lot of laughter, so I was very... But, but most importantly, uh, it's your first movie. Yeah. You're a fantastic uh, director of music videos. What did your mother think of the movie? <laughs> um, you know what? It, I don't fully know. <laughs> it's European parents. It's funny. My mom's French, and it's you. You kind of you. You get. You figure it out. But I feel like it's yeah. a different. It's, it's like those mo mom compliments. It's not bad. Yeah. Which is like, oh, it's fantastic. She loved it. Uh, it's it's you know speaking about parents uh, and relationships. Um, spoiler alert, Clara. I have heard that there is a familial r relationship here. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We decided yeah. To, with our casting to just try to try to keep it realistic. Realistic. Gonna play dad. <laughs> yeah, on the <laughs> nose here. <You> know, yeah. <laughs> we went through a lot of a lot of different people, and we just landed on this guy. <laughs> no, but no, the story the story is you you conceive the story. It's it's a it's a daughter and father relationship, mm. uh, and it's a it's a strained relationship, right? Mm -hmm. The father is estranged. Uh, there's tension. There's loneliness, and both of you go on a trip together. And, and, and as you conceive this, mm -hmm. you, did you ever sit there and go, you know what? My dad would be great <laughs> as the absentee father here. And you're like, let me give him the script. <laughs> I'm just curious how that went ab about for you to decide to hand the script to your father and say, play this role. Yeah, well, you know, I think like with any families and with any relationships, we'd gone through our, our things and, and we'd reconciled. And I was really interested in that reconciliation and mm. how just just people find each other again especially um, daughters and fathers and and you know that kind of moment so it did really kind of stem from from us and and being inspired from our relationship and then from there you know our, our writer Ruby Castor my my producer Vera Boulder and Emma Westenberg really brought the script and, and brought so much of themselves and, and their own stories into it as well so it's a it's a big mix and it's definitely a work of fiction but it that's where it came from for me and you uh, i'm a father i got i got two daughters if if my if my kids even when they're teenagers want to hang out with me i'm like i've succeeded in life yeah <laughs> so your daughter said you know what i want to make a movie with you dad mm. but here's a script about an yeah. absentee father yeah what was your response well i was i was very very blown away by the script i mean um yeah, it came, it came out of a period of where Clara and I were not seeing very much of each other. Mm. And um, so the idea of a film being written sort of uh, about that was nerve wracking, I suppose, until I, and then when Clara gave me the script, I was just very, very moved by it. Mm. Um, it's a, 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 a journey that the father and the daughter in our story go through. And um, it, it was very, very touching, but also it was very, very funny. And I think that was one of the things that really, I was really impressed with was the, there was a very beautiful lab, uh, a juxtaposition of the com of the funny with the with the serious, and and that's how the film plays really. It, it it does feel that way. So so when I read the script, I was absolutely blown away by it. It was really it was really an amazing, it is an amazing script. And then and then what all of the 
elements that have come into it since then. All of the people, the creative people, have just made it into something very really special. So you had dad approval, which was great. You you feel good about the script. You have the vision. You have you have the core of the crew right here, and you're like, this vision has to come to reality. I need a director. And yeah. you're like, you know what? First time director Emma Westenberg. Uh -huh. Let's go to her. Why her? Well, I've I've known Emma for for a while. Uh, Vera Boulder, my producing partner, and, and Emma go way back. So I'd met you in in New York maybe five years prior to this. Um, so we we'd gotten to the script. It wasn't finished. We'd gotten to a place where we really liked it, and that's when we wanted to bring on a director to really f to to fl flesh it out and just kind of bring their own vision to it. And we met with a few directors, but Emma really I don't know. In that meeting, you. Your vision for it was something that I, I hadn't, I couldn't, I hadn't come up with, and I, I didn't see it that way. But it was that's all I wanted to do was just live in the world that you were talking about, and so Emma really, really ran with the script as well and put so much into that, and that's kind of where we, yeah, how we got to. What did you see when you when you read the script? Um, well, I definitely also really liked the humoristic parts in it, and. Um, that it was about a father and a daughter. Uh, I, the relationship that I have with my father is probably the most formative of my life, mm. and so he means a lot to me. So I very much like um, connected with that relationship, and that it's a real father and daughter is really, of course, a dream to work with because there's so much to from for you guys to pull from, and I think you really see that on the screen. Um, yeah, but yeah, I, I, I pitched on the, on the script uh, first to Clara and the other producers and then to you and then I pitched this idea that um, she daughter doesn't know in the beginning of the mm. script that she goes to rehab. That, mm. And I pitched it to you and the first time that I met him and he was like, oh, I don't like that at all. Do you remember <laughs> yeah. that? Yeah. <laughs> No, the script was yeah. the script was was a, was about him taking like, her to oh. rehab. Yeah. And I went, that's the that's the story. That's the story. But uh, you were right. You were so right. It worked. I know, and was I think it? It, I think when it clicked, we were, yeah, I think you were just like, oh yeah, no. But I was I like, see, I definitely didn't. Just, <laughs> I also I also really liked that you weren't thrown by that. You know, that, that was a big thing. You, mm. yeah, you, I really admired you that you stood your ground. <laughs> Yeah, I think so. That was the good main you. thing. You yeah. didn't waver on it at all, and I and I I was like, that's that's also gonna make you look at it differently. Yeah. I think, which yeah. it did. And you had 22 days. Uh, you were telling me about which, which as a music director, you're like 22 days. This is epic. <laughs> this is yeah. my Doctor Zhivago. <laughs> I have so much time. But 22 days for most folks, it's not that much time, right, to get it done. But you all got it done, and there's an aesthetic here. There, there's a levity. There's a lightness. But you know, even though you're dealing with heavy topics, you know, rehab, estrangement, pain, uh, I think it's safe to say the movie's also cathartic. There's a there's a healing there, mm -hmm. and and you know, just conceiving this movie, and I have to ask you this, Clara, because we're all going through a lot. Mm -hmm. There's a pandemic. Uh, we've lost folks, mm -hmm. and I think the pandemic has forced a lot of people to be like, huh, maybe I should connect with individuals. What's really important in life? And I'm just very curious if just surviving and enduring the pandemic inspired something in the script that made you think, this is what I want to work on right now. You know, I I feel like it was during the, um, that whole kind of time period is a bit of a... Time is a mix, flat circle. The <laughs> I, think yeah. That, yeah. I think the world kind of pausing and, you know, and, and going through this definitely um, gave me some room in my brain to, to think about it. But it all happened pretty quick. And I would say, I think that what I, I hope people get from it is, is hope and that it's, it's worth giving it a shot and, and trying to reconnect. And I think the pandemic has definitely made that clear that it's important for us to, to, to have each other close, you know, mm -hmm. and be with loved ones, so. You and how about yourself? Because as an actor, the job, I can just imagine, is demanding, right? You have you raise a family, you love your kids, you got to go shoot a movie, you're away for six months. Mm -hmm. Then you got to do press, just like now, which I'm sure you all love doing right now, waking <laughs> up super early, talking to me. Uh, but but there's sacrifices <laughs> that are made, right? There's sacrifices sometimes in your in your personal life, and now you have uh, the hindsight of mileage. Mm -hmm. uh, you're the cool middle-aged dad that all my female friends love. Uh, you know, like me. <laughs> Wait, yeah, again, the middle-aged middle yeah. 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 middle The young, the young, the young middle-aged dad. The young Obi Wan. No, no, you're you're uh, totally right. Uh, <laughs> right in the middle. You're right age. 
Yeah, yeah. middle age. And so, you know, but with that hindsight, right, and, and going through the pandemic and having this, it's, was this a good opportunity for you just to, just to connect again uh, uh, on a personal level with your daughter in such a rich artistic environment? Yeah, I mean, we, you don't get to spend that much time with your adult daughter. Like, it just doesn't happen, really. Yeah. But we had weeks where we... The, the, you know, leading up to the film was bringing us closer together because we're talking about it, and and then getting there, we you know we we spent three four weeks in yeah. each other's company all the time, and that was I don't know that that ever happens with two I don't kids. Think so. it's, it's I don't, really after the age of twelve, I don't yeah. think so. And it was really it was really beautiful. It was because you know it's time to hang out and chat or just sit in silence, and we were in this you know the the film is a journey in this truck and so we were in that truck a lot just the two of us you know yeah and we'd do a take and we'd have to reset and so we were just the two of us a lot and it was really amazing I and mean, there's an amazing experience and also i have to say i was getting to watch clara's acting for the first time really i'd seen the shorts that clara had made and i'd seen her uh, you know what uh, some of your casting tapes and things she would send me but i'd never really seen Clara do this and I was impressed you know I was really impressed by her and playing the scenes with her was incredibly easy and lovely and then uh, on top of that I was very proud of the way she held herself as a producer sorry this mm. is like you're this is great. Here, but, but you just you gotta know, take it <laughs> we held herself with the crew you know having having being being the person who's responsible for this happening at all she was very professional with the crew and I was able to watch her with them, and I was a very proud dad all the time. This is yeah. sincere dad pride. I could tell. I yeah. could tell. No, He's, I feel it. I it's can see you in the eyes. Very nice. And for you, was it like you know, you were seeing your dad uh, on set, but he's also your colleague. And were you like, my dad's a pretty damn good actor? Huh? You know, I'd always, I'd always thought that and appreciated your work and always loved your movies. But I think, yeah, being in a scene with you and and getting to really act with you. I think, yeah, I got to see how dropped in and and great and how great he is at what he does, you know, just always there, always listening and engaged. And I definitely had, felt like I had a lot to learn from that, too. So I was excited to get yeah. to see that. The movie's about discovery, right? Or I should say rediscovery. Yeah. And as you said, as a dad, uh, when you have kids, like every stage is, is you kind of rediscovering your kid and your kid rediscovers you. And I was just curious, uh, when you were together filming these scenes, what did you all, what did you all find? And it's a personal question, but like, what did you like? Oh, I, I didn't know that about my. Wow, look at that, <laughs> look at that. I learned this about Clara at this, at this stage in life that I did not know. Yeah, I, I, thought, I think it's difficult to put your, you know, the question of what you learn from an experience like making a movie is a difficult one to put your finger on. There's no one thing. I mean, I, I was definitely proud of Clara and I, like I say working with uh, the crew and her carrying the responsibility that she carried I was very proud of her and also I just had fun with her like we the, the, the Emma yeah. created a, a, a set where we got to play and you know the we weren't sort of tied on top of the dialogue too so we were able to sort of do you get improvise play around a little bit yeah I mean we had a script. I mean it was your script yeah. so you're like well you know it was a lot of our scripts it, it, but I think uh, you know going in Emma was was very supportive of, of us playing with improv and mm. kind of if we wanted to change something or if something didn't feel as authentic anymore once it was off the page and we were acting it out then there was always room for us to kind of get in there with Al and kind of you know rework it so well also you know there's dialogue but there's in the movie there's also silence yeah mm. and I'm curious Emma you know you're watching this you're watching two actors whose two actors are playing uh, daughter and and father in real life it's daughter and father, and you get to be the bird's eye who kind of hovers over and sees. Or were there, were there moments that you think that just with their dynamic, the silence captured enough, and you decided to leave that in? Um, yeah, I, I mean, definitely on multiple occasions. Uh, just the way that they look at each other is something that I think, also because you guys are very similar in a lot of ways, you know, that... How are they similar? I don't know, like a certain like <laughs> openness and like, um, yeah, jo a certain openness and joy. I think you both really have towards everybody. Like, and I think you see it on the screen, but also towards how you communicate to other people and to each other. So I think that it really, you really do see a mirror in a lot of it moments. And I think that that works best when it's quiet. Mm. Yeah, mm. <laughs> I love that last night I lo at the beginning of the film. 
it's quite quiet at the beginning. You know, we don't really know who they are at the beginning of a movie, and we don't we don't tell the audience like straight away. You know, like a lot yeah. of movies would explain in the first few scenes who they are. We don't really know, and um, there are lots of si there's lots of silence in the beginning. It's very I love in in the um, when we're at the petrol station buying <laughs> the sweets and the hot dogs. It's just this long moment where they're standing waiting to pay. I yeah. don't know, it's not, it suddenly becomes a big moment in the movie, but it's, there's, you know, you could say there's nothing going on, but there's quite a lot going on. Mm. Well, and then at the end as well, at the, at the very end of the movie, you'll see there's, there's silence at the end, which is, because there's, there's, no, there's nothing, there's no need to say anything at the end, and we understand that through them, which is really yeah. brave, you know, I think. Mm. Especially nowadays where silence makes so many people uncomfortable. Mm. You know, mm. TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, it got to be on your phone. And then people just don't sit back for a second and watch. And I feel also the silence, in the reason why it's a good choice is it, it, it just shows the distance at the beginning, right? And then yeah. the distance gets, gets bridged, if you will, without, without giving too many spoilers away <laughs> of the movie. You're right. I think we've been vague enough, vagueish enough. <laughs> yeah. uh, their music plays a role in the movie. And I'm very curious. We have, this is South by Southwest. Big music place, big food place, big movie place. If I don't ask, ask a music question, my producer, Jen, if you could probably hear her, gets very upset. Uh, the choice of using Leona Lewis's song. Who made that choice? Why that song? Well, we were looking, we were, we were <laughs> trying to find a perfect song for that scene. And then we were sending back and forth so many different songs. And then Clara, she... Yeah, there was, well... That was our song. Yeah, Dad, we had, a, well, you had a especially big, big moment with Leona Lewis, which I, which I was, you know, on board with. And there was... It was the school run. It was the school run. The school car. run. It was, the, it was always like full blast on the way to school. And then I hit like 12, 13 and started just <laughs> ducking once we pulled up to the school and the... And the radio was, yeah. would get louder, and it was yeah. like the bleeding Don't you love like the song? I think all the kids will love it. And I was just like, oh, God. Dad, that stop was nothing, That was nothing compared to when I picked you up in a, side, a motorbike and sidecar from which, school one day. Which is the coolest thing <laughs> and now, You were in the sidecar, right? of course. Never seen her more embarrassed. I was but that, to, go around the corner, go around the corner. I had to go <laughs> right around the corner. I can get it now, I can see. But I, at the time, I was like, no, but sure, see, this is the coolest, coolest thing ever. Gets, yeah. Now, at the time, I'm like, that is the coolest thing ever. And I think, it, you know, in seventh grade, I just wanted to <laughs> no, fit no. in. And it's not cool being picked up at that way. When you're a kid, it's not. I'm not. just having to, yeah. But, but Leona Lewis was, yeah. our, was a big song for us. And then there was another one. She did a cover of Run. Yeah, she did do by, a cover um, of Run by Snow Patrol. By Snow Patrol, which we also really liked. They're just <laughs> big and full-on emotional, you know, like there's no, but, there's, there's no holding back with Leona. No. <laughs> but I love so, it, I love it how that, like something that's so formative to your relationship just shows up and, on the screen. Yeah, that's it's made, me, that's really, made me smile so hard last night. I know, night, me too. Really I couldn't believe we got the rights. I mean, we threw it out there and it was, it was very funny, well, kind speak, of. Well, speaking of families, yeah. uh, when your loved ones watch this, yeah, they're like, Wow, they put Leona Lewis in there. Were yeah. they were they just laughing at this? Were they cringing? Were like, oh, that's that's oh, well, that's, little that's Esther, them. Esther, Esther, Clara's huh? sister Esther. Um, <laughs> there's a line in it. My heart's crippled, right? My, My heart's crippled, crippled by, by the, the vein that I keep, keep on, on closing. Closing. Mm. <laughs> but, but Esther thought it was scribbled. My heart scribbled. She was tiny. She's like, what does scribbled mean? And but she so. So we sang scribbled in we, the yeah, film, don't we? Yeah, we kept the scribbled. No, I showed it to Esther, and she was, yeah, she. It's a it's a core memory for her too, in many ways. So that was that was funny. For I her wish I had more time, but I'm I got a minute left, so I'm going to ask this. Okay. Uh, your colleague and co-star, you and yes. McGregor, who just happens to be your dad. Uh, you've cringed, you've <laughs> applauded, you've seen his career uh, of all his roles. Which is the one that you say, that's my favorite. That's my favorite Ewan McGregor role. Well, so other than this one. Other than this one. <laughs> um, oh, wow. I think... That's on the spot. That's a It's on the spot, but I think that... I'd, I'd say Beginners really always oh, yeah. had a real impact on Fantastic me. Fantastic movie. Mm -hmm. Train spotting, you know? Classic. 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 Can't um, go wrong with train spotting. And speaking about okay. train spotting, I was a, a, a young man when I saw it in high school. 
uh, Train Spotting 2 came out, which I think not enough people have seen, which is a fantastic yeah, companion Yeah, it was a good piece. film, wasn't it? Yeah, I which like yeah. speak my middle we age. We were here with it. We brought it to this film. <laughs> it, 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 it does. It brings it all together in a really, I think, just yeah. Uh, yeah, a good way. What, t yeah. what time does? What age does? Right. Yeah. And 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 the career that you've had, that my generation sees you as, you know, Rent Boy, Train Spotting, uh, Obi Wan, and then you come back twenty years later, Train Spotting Two, and now you're Obi Wan again. Yeah. And, and you look back at that and, and just to replay those characters from the vantage point of, of now being dad, yeah. McGregor. Yeah, how does it make you feel? Like, just compared to when you were that young, that young hungry actor and fast forward you 20 were years. All, you were still dad back then, No, too. I was dad for a long time. I was dad when I was very young. It took yeah. me, I'd been dad for like 15 years before I ever got cast as one. You know, I, like once I got <laughs> cast as one, I think it was the impossible. Oh wow! And then oh, I was yeah. just like, dad, dad, dad. You know, suddenly, yeah. super dad in that movie. Suddenly, I was dad age, but in yeah. actual fact, I'd been a dad for a long time before that. Yeah. I don't feel any differently at my work. I just feel the same way about it. Really, I do, uh, and I'm I'm so happy about that because it might be, you know, I think probably the waiting or the, you know, sitting <laughs> sitting in a. I've sat in a lot of trailers. I've spent half my life sitting in a trailer waiting to go on <laughs> to work. You know, and um, so maybe that bit is I I. I the actual acting, I love every bit as much as I ever did. So mm. I haven't. Nothing's changed there. And then playing parts again later is really interesting. Playing um, Obi Wan Kenobi again after such a huge. It was very easy. And also playing Renton again after 20 years. It was like they like they sort of existed in your brain somewhere. They aged with you. Yeah, and you just mm. you know you get back in the cloak. <laughs> and you know the lightsaber comes there, out. Yeah, uh, the, the, sort of the lightsaber training was a little yeah. bit more exhausting than I remember it when I was a younger man. Uh, it's fantastic. <laughs> uh, I, there's immense dad pride uh, here with you and your work yes. and your work. So I hope I hope you can feel the love. And uh, congratulations on the premiere of South by. Really mm -hmm. embrace the movie. And I have a final request. You can say no. <laughs> uh, I'm sure annoying fans come to you all the time and they ask for. They ask for lines, right? They choose life, and then there's Obi Wan. Well, hello there. Hello there. Uh, Ramadan's coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, 1.7 billion Muslims. It's in two weeks. I gotta start fasting. A favor. That's your camera for all your Muslim fans. You have many. You filmed before. Yeah. You learned a bit of Arabic. Instead of saying, "Well, hello there," would you mind for all the Muslims who are about to fast in two weeks saying, "Well, salams there." Uh, okay. Yes. Well, salams there. Did that work? <laughs> worked. Worked. Okay. Worked. Dad Kenobi. Thank you so much. Well done. <laughs> Clara, congratulations. Yeah. Emma, Thank fantastic you. first feature. Well Round of applause. <laughs> we all survived daylight savings. Who needs sleep? No. Who needs sleep? Thanks all for watching our studio interviews, our live streaming during the conference on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash SXSW. And you can see our complete schedule of studio interviews on our website at SXSW.com slash studio. I'm your host, Wajat Ali. Thanks for watching.